Hello wonderful people, it is Genevieve and in this video we're going to learn how to draw cute animal characters that may or may not uh, look like Animal Crossing villagers. And we're kind of using that as an excuse to learn about shape versus form, which is such an important thing for people who want to improve their drawing. It's just a really important concept. So grab your drawing tools of choice and let's start creating. And for this tutorial, you can really use any digital drawing software that you want or even just pencil and paper if that's what you're into. I'm personally using the iPad just because of the filming setup that I have, but that's really totally up to you. If you are drawing digitally, go ahead and create a new layer that you're going to rename to Sketch and pick a nice sketching brush that you like. In Procreate, I use the dry ink brush that just comes with the software. And you're going to start by drawing a thin, very light round shape that is really loose and quick because at this point we're just sketching. And you're going to measure the height of that round shape and mark it below it because that's a pretty good rule of thumbs for proportions for the body and the head. And at this point, it might be tempting to just draw one straight vertical line to kind of indicate the spine, just like this. But that has the tendency of making illustrations and drawing feel really stiff and two-dimensional. And the reason for that is that um, we would have been using only shapes. And shapes, you know, are two-dimensional areas on a piece of paper. So like a square, a circle, an oval, they're all shapes. What we are going to do now instead of using shapes is using forms. So forms are the three-dimensional um, versions of shapes, if you can say it like that. So a sphere would be the form that you would get from a circle. A box would basically be the form that you would get from a square, etc. And understanding how to use forms instead of shapes in drawing is really, I mean, it's fairly easy. It's not like complicated theory. But with the understanding, and of course with some practice, your illustrations are just going to straight up come to life if you use forms and think with forms instead of shapes. And in this case, what it means is instead of drawing a middle line that was super straight, you're going to draw some middle lines that are curved. So as you can see here on my uh, very rough <laughs> sphere, I'm drawing a curved line in the front and then kind of continuing this curved line in some sort of a oval shape with the dashed line in the, um, in the back. And that, gives, that just shows um, the actual form. Instead of uh, having a circle, now I have a sphere. And so that's what you're going to do with your head as well. So once you have the head, you're going to loosely sketch a rounded rectangle for the body, leaving some space for the legs. And the body is not going to be a sphere, obviously. It's going to be more like a box. So to create a box, you're just going to add some um, like oval shapes on both sides, which are going to act as the side of the box. And this part you don't have to draw, it's just something I wanted to do to show you even more what, what I meant with the box shape. So just don't, don't draw these guys, it's just for, for the example. And once you have your body, just go ahead and draw some very simple stumpy legs. There's nothing about form here, you just draw a stumpy leg. And then you're going to draw two oval shapes on both sides of the box, as well as some sort of an arc that is going to help you place the arms. And the ovals on both sides of the box are basically acting as shoulder. So use them as your base to draw some stumpy arms that just extend down to the arc that you've created as well. And this is the base that you can use to create pretty much any cute animal character that you want. So feel free to pick your favorite animal. Um, I will be using a rabbit. And at this point, we're just going to be adding some sort of facial features and personalizing a little bit more. You can do pretty much whatever you want for the eyes. As long as they stay on this middle line, it will look good. And I like to keep the nose super simple, like I'm talking just a regular little oval in the middle. And you can really let loose for the mouth and draw whatever you want, but if you want something cute, just go ahead with this traditional like W looking shape. And for the ears, you're going to start by drawing the shape that you want your ears to be, so a two-dimensional shape. And you're going to turn that shape into a box by repeating the same shape just in a slightly different location and then connecting 
the two shapes together. So that's kind of what we did for the box of the body earlier, but just with a like more complex form um, and shape to start with, if that makes sense at all. <laughs> so once you have laid out all the general and main features of your character, you're just going to clean out your sketch a little bit and mark the lines that are like real lines and are important in sketch by going over them with uh, more force this time so that your strokes are darker and also just wider in general. So as you can see here, um, doing that is kind of a process. Uh, it's not just like a straightforward thing because you want to really make sure that you are building the outlines in a way that respects the form that you've created. And a really good example of that is where the body um, overlaps with the arms, and that's what I'm, I'm drawing here, so it's a good timing. But yeah, where the body overlaps the arm on one side, since it's three-dimensional and we have some angle in the character, the body is going to like overlap with the arm and hide a part of the arm, especially the shoulder in this case. But on the other side, the arm is going to be in front of the like the side of the body. And that's the beauty of using forms is that everything makes sense. It is not you, like it's not a guessing game of what goes where and what overlaps what. It's just a question of reinforcing what you already sketched and making it look a little bit more polished before coloring. And having the forms is going to be really helpful in adding more details to our piece such as clothes if you are indeed going for an Animal Crossing character. So let's look at what our bunny would look like with a shirt and how we would draw that shirt. For the sleeves, you're going to draw an oval where you want the sleeve to end instead of just one straight line and that's going to give, again, just more, more life to your illustration, it's going to make it look three-dimensional. And of course you're going to use the same technique for the bottom part of the shirt. So where you want the shirt to end, instead of drawing just like one straight line across the body, you're going to draw an oval shape. And that's going to help you see how to curve your line so that it looks right with the shape of the body that is actually there. And Animal Crossing characters are really the perfect things to use to practice um, first drawing forms instead of shapes and like three-dimensional illustrations because they are very easy to understand you know it's like very simple forms put together in a very simple way but it is the same theory it is the same techniques that you would use to create very complex characters, objects, and environment. So it is a really good way to start practicing seeing how to create different forms and then how to connect different forms together and also just understanding the angles. So, I mean, that's a pretty good excuse to draw a bunch of really cool characters if you ask me, you know, it's, it's practice. And I'd even say, you know, even if you are a very experienced artist, it's also just a good warm up. <laughs> you know, before getting into very complicated illustrations, just starting with very simple characters that are back to the basics of forms. That's a great, great way to start. So yeah, this was how to draw a cute character that may or may not look like an Animal Crossing villager. And in part two, I will show you how to color it on Procreate. So if you're into that, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the video. Um, but in the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up because it really does help the channel. And I am dying to see which characters you guys create because you, you have so many good ideas. Um, so yeah, make sure to share them with me either on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. See you in part two.